Unique boot entry. First, let's talk about the boot configuration. Reminder, on all the STM32 you could boot from, use a flash memory, embedded bootloader, or SRAM. Using a GP2, you restrict to boot from your user flash memory. I invite you to have a look in the ADP chapter. But we've got additional features. On the STM32, G0, G4, and L5, we've got mechanism to ensure we boot from the user flash memory even in ADP1. On the STM32H7, we've got a mechanism closely linked with the secure memory and the root security system. So I propose we go in detail for those. Let's start with the boot configuration on the G0, G4. First, we test an option byte and boot cell. Depending on its value, then we will test the boot zero pin or the end boot zero bit, which is an option byte. If we test the boot zero pin, if it's zero, then we boot from main flash memory. If it's one, we test another option byte with the end boot one bit, and then we boot from embedded SRAM or system memory. The end boot zero bit is tested also, and if it's zero, we then test the end boot one bit option byte, but if it's one, we boot from the main flash memory. This is the boot configuration for G0, G4, classically, I would say. But we've got this additional feature. It's another option by bit, which is a boot lock bit. If this one is set, you boot to the main flash memory, whatever the end boot cell, boot pin, and end boot G0 or end boot G1 bits. So the purpose is to lock the boot on the user flash, whatever the boot configuration. If boot lock is set to 1, the device boot on the user flash whatever the state of the end boot bit or pin. The boot lock can be changed from 0 to 1, I mean we can activate it when we are in RDP 0 or in RDP 1. But if you want to change it from 1 to 0, I would say to remove this functionality, you can only do it in RDP level 0. So if you are in RDP 1 with a boot lock set, the only way to go back from this is to make a regression from LDP1 to LDP0, which imply a math error. Then you can change the boot lock value once you are in LDP0. Let's switch now to the boot configuration of the L5 when trust zone is activated. In this case, there is a test on an option byte nth of 12 boot 0. If it's 1, then there is a test on the boot 0 pin. If it's 0, there is a test on an option byte n boot t0 bit. If the pin is set to zero, we boot to the sec boot address, I mean an option byte which contains this value. If it's one, we boot to the embedded bootloader, which is also called ASS in the case of the L5. Then if we test the end boot zero bit, if it's one, we go on the RSS. If it's zero, we boot to the sec boot address. The additional mechanism is similar to the G0, G4. There is a boot lock bit, and if it's to one, we boot to the sec boot address and this option byte is locked. That means you can't modify this sec boot address. So you have to set it before activate the boot lock bit. The purpose is the same. Lock boots on user flash whatever the boot configuration. If boot lock is set to one, the sec boot address option byte can't be modified and the device will boot on the sec boot address for sure. It can be changed from 0 to 1 in RDP 0, RDP 1, but caution, boot lock can be clear even if you are in RDP 0. That means when you activate this functionality with stress zone activated, then you can't remove it. About the boot configuration of the H7, just test the boot pin, and if it's 0, it boot to the boot address 0. If it's 1, it boot to, to the boot address 1. So, Boot address 0 and boot address 1 are option byte and the content is the address where you want to boot. The additional feature is a little bit different here. It's just you activate the security. So if you activate the security, then you will boot to the RSS with the embedded bootloader with some security features. And this one will select to boot on the secure memory area. And this secure memory area is defined in the option byte sec area start 1 or sec area start 2 because there is two regions possible. Here, this is closely linked to the secure mem definition. So I don't give you much more detail here, and I invite you to have a look in the secure memory chapter. So to sum up with the H7, when security is activated and secure memory is defined, 
the STM32 will always boot on this secure memory. The only way to modify this is to do a LDP1 to LDP0 regression, which implies a flash mass errors. The detailed description will be addressed in the secure user memory part. The availability of this feature across all the STM32 family, we've got the STM32 L5, the H7, G0, and G4. Usually I try to do some hands-on for each chapter. For this one, I decided not to do some chapter, some hands-on, sorry, uh, because it's a little bit not dangerous, but you can easily break your device if you define and lock the address when you want to boot and you are in ADP1. This is the end of this chapter. Thanks for your attention.